All right, everybody, welcome to week two. Yay, week two. Are you guys so excited? Yay. Yes, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, so glad. So, you guys, we have a special guest with us. You guys might all know and love her. It is Chef Janet. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure getting to stop by and say, hey, how's your week two going? Are you enjoying your entrepreneurship? Are you guys just ready to open up that business tomorrow? Yeah, ready? Take it on? Yeah. All right. I just wanted to say, hey, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. So make sure you pay attention to what uh, Chef Rachel, Chef John, and Chef Gregory have to say about what's going to happen for Thanksgiving. And just to remind you, yes, assignments are still due Tuesday night, no later than 11.59 p.m. So remember that. But most importantly, in the chat, if you guys need someone to talk to or just touch bases or uh, essentially say, hey, uh, you have my phone number as well as my text number, would love to hear from you. But more, the most important thing is this. After this class is over with, you guys have 12 weeks before externship, except for T. T's ready to rock it. Uh, and, and what I'm going to say to you guys is this. That puts you uh, finished with this program in, let's see, they have February, uh, April. It is so close, my friends. You have no idea. Did I just lose everybody? Somebody blink. Somebody blink. Oh, thank God. Somebody moved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so keep the focus because you know what's going to happen. Do you see these four chefs on this, uh, you know, this screen right now? We're going to be singing and dancing with you at your wedding. I just want to, uh, no, at your graduation, not your wedding, at your graduation. <laughs> so keep the focus, everybody. And uh, I'm looking forward to you guys having a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, chefs. You need anything, let me know. Thanks for letting me stop by. Thank you, Chef Janet. And remember, guys, start looking for externships now. Does anybody can guess, can anyone want to guess where I did my externship? Anybody? 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 What country did I do my externship in? Anybody? France. France? Nope. I was gonna say Paris. Paris? Nope. Germany. <laughs> Germany? Nope, but my sister's there. Italy. Here? No, not here. I did it in Australia. I wanted to go to Australia, and then I was there for the year. Then I went over to New Zealand and saw how nothing could kill me over there. There are no poisonous snakes. There's no deadly spiders. Then I was like, wow, why didn't I do my externship in New Zealand? <laughs> this is so much safer. So... Think about it. You can do your externship anywhere. It is a great opportunity, but think about it now because, I mean, I wasn't able to think like three weeks before my externship like started like, hmm, maybe I want to go to Australia. Maybe I should do that. No, I had to think ahead. Think, think ahead. Uh, chefs, where did you guys do your externships? So I did my externship in Napa Valley in a town called Yonkville. Nice one. It is an amazing town to be in. <laughs> it took me over three months to get that lined up. Uh, it was not a last minute thing. I really had to plan ahead and get it squared away long while I was way before externship in the program. Um, actually, probably a little before where you guys are right now. I started thinking about it and looking around at where I might want to do it, so. I did mine at the Sagamore Resort in Lake George, New York, which is like way, way, way up there, kind of by where Montreal is. Uh, mine was set up through school, and when we get closer to yours, we have Chef Gina, and she will be able to help you guys uh, set up callbacks, just any type of information. She will assist you when we get there. All right, and do you guys have, do you know Chef Gina? Anybody raise a hand who knows Chef Gina? We will get her contact information for you. I'll put it in a delightful message just for you guys. 
So we get that info because start planning now. You can have an amazing opportunity, but you have to start looking now, right? Have to start now. Uh, next, we are going to talk about this past week's assignments. So Chef Jonathan, Chef Greg, if you guys want to talk about the assignment, got about five minutes. If you guys have questions, ask them now for last week's assignment. So real quick, in general, I loved what I saw in this week's assignment. Um, lots of great details about your concepts. I loved hearing about how far your concepts have come since 165 when I got to see them for the first time. Um, I did see a couple areas that were more commonly struggled with. When you're doing your location demographics, make sure you're actually giving me the information right there in, on the page instead of just a link. Remember, this is going to be part of your business plan. So just giving a link isn't going to really work too well. So um, that was a common mistake. Another one is with the mission statement. I saw a lot of people really struggle with that. And um, <clears throat> the difference between a mission statement and a marketing tool. But in general, they really did look good. How about you, Chef Craig? Uh, you guys had amazing ideas for your restaurants, your food trucks, your businesses. Just remember, since we're talking about externship, we're talking about like moving forward, being a chef, this is your, this is your business. So all that passion, all these ideas you have in your head, how cool it's going to look, the music you're going to use, this is going to be part of that business plan. So when you go to investors, you go into a bank, there, that's your chance to show and talk about all that passion that you have up here. You're putting that onto paper so they can see actual numbers. This is the people with expendable income. This is how much their houses cost. This is what I'm going to provide to them. So when you're thinking about like things like this and all these business talks in this class, try to keep just using it forward. So that I'm going to use this in a year. I'm going to use this in two years. I'm going to use this in five years. But really nice, uh, really nice projects. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chef Jonathan. Sorry, I was just going to ask if anybody had questions after doing it this last week. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> that worked out. Great minds. Nobody has questions? What was the question? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm at work, and so it's kind of hard for me to hear. Did you have any questions about this last week's assignment? Um, my, my thing, I mean, I did pretty good. I say that even though it was, it seemed a little, um, I guess not, not understanding, especially when it came to like the SWAT for, uh, oh, shucks, for the other, uh, restaurant, because I was thinking that you was wanted us to put down what was their strengths. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was it. You had to put down, you had to look at it like that competition was your business. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. So even though it, even though we had did it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you want to know everything your competition is doing because maybe they're doing something better than you. Why are they going over and spending customers spending money at that establishment? Mm -hmm. What are they doing differently? And then you can see like, do they have a good menu? Do they not have a good menu? Is the service good? Is the location good? Those are things you have to think about when you're doing a SWOT analysis for you and for the competition. And then remember, Chef Greg brought up an excellent point about your assignments and about presenting it to the bank, right? I just helped a friend of mine this past summer. We, I helped her start her business. We went to the actual, like we met up with the investors. I have these pretty black folders because I bought a bunch of them. Of course, it's great to see, right? Can, you can see them so well in the black backdrop, right, guys? Right, right? New smile, smile. But this is what they wanted to see. They, I had to present them. I put in super pretty paper. It was like that really nice one, like, you know, that really like thick and it has that nice texture to it. And they're like, what is your demographic for your area? Now, I'm going to zoom in. Do you see this right here? See how that's a link? I can't click on that. 
it's on a piece of paper. You can't click on the link if it's on a piece of paper. So when you're doing your assignments, you can't just put a link. It's great that if you have a link, then we know that you referenced it from a legit source, but you need to actually put the information down. Because if I was the investor and I saw a link, I'd be like, yeah, that's great. It's on a piece of paper. What am I supposed to do with a link on a piece of paper? It didn't give me any of the information. What's the information? So think about that when you're doing the assignments and when you're looking for stuff, you can't just give a link. And besides, links can go bad. They can break. You can put an extra space in by accident. And all of a sudden, if you gave all this information and a bunch of links and they go bad, you have to start all over again, right? So that is why it's key to put the information in. Like you imagine that your investor wants it paper form in this nice, super shiny, really pretty black folder. That's what you're gonna do for your assignments. Am I correct, chefs? I'm getting nods. You are. <laughs> right? It's important, right, Jeff? Absolutely. Please. Please. <laughs> so, and remember, this brings up another valid point when you guys are doing your assignments. You want good, good, actual, legit references. Wikipedia is not a reference. I could put in there right now that the Queen of England is a seven foot purple polka dot dragon and it would let me do it. And we all know Queen Elizabeth, she is not seven feet polka dot purple dragon. While she may wear those colors well, she is, that is not what she is. So what is a good example of a legit reference for you guys? What do you think a good example is for a legit ref reference? Census Bureau. What did you say? Census, Census Bureau. Thank you. Yeah, Census Bureau. Where else are you going to find the information? I'm going to stay like this until you guys say something. Over me. I heard something. What was it? I Googled it. You Googled it? Yeah, I Google like for like the assignment that we have today. Like, where do I Google? Where would you find her tax number? And then it popped up, and then it had a link on there for that. Yep, but you gotta remember, government websites are really, really nice, right? Because that's government. That's legit statistical data that you can use for your establishment. So you got to make certain Wikipedia, that isn't one. Um, what was uh, the blog, certain blogs you're not going to want to do. Those aren't legit references. You what about BBB? BBB, what's yeah. Better Business Bureau? Better business Bureau. Yeah. Yep, BBB is a great reference. And that will bring us into week two. Yay, week two. Are you guys excited? First, we're going to do, yeah, that's right, Tracy. First, we're going to have important items. We have Thanksgiving. How many people are excited? How many people knew that there's actually a Thanksgiving song? Anybody? Anybody? Jingle Bells is technically a Thanksgiving song. For those who don't believe me, you can research it. Am I right? Right? Yeah. And so that means we're not going to have our live session in the middle of you holding a drumstick. We won't make you be like eating your pie. So we are going to move our live session to Wednesday at 730 Central Standard Time. So remember, we're going to move our live session to Wednesday, 730 Central Standard Time. Are you getting ready to host a bunch of in-laws? 
that's what the live sessions are for, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be traveling? Then check out the live session. You can have that going when you're making your apple pie or your mashed potatoes or whatever you're going to do. It's, it's fun. You're going to enjoy having that in the background. And it's a good talking point for everybody else in the room because they'd be like, what are you looking at? Oh, that's what you're, that's what you're learning at school? That's interesting. See, talking points. Ta-da. And then we have our discussion that will be due on Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time with two peer responses to other posts. That means you actually have to read somebody else's post and respond to it. You're not just responding to somebody responding to your post. That doesn't count. You actually have to read other people's posts and respond. And remember, saying I agree or I 100% disagree, you gotta back that up. Why do you disagree? Why do you uh, agree? And remember, be nice. If you don't like what somebody wrote, take five minutes, give it a squeeze nice and slow, take a deep breath and let it go. For all those people who have kids and know Daniel Tiger, <laughs> Chef Jonathan, I don't know if you have your daughter doing Daniel Tiger, but that's gonna be a big one for you. <laughs> that's a new one, I haven't heard about that yet. <laughs> oh yeah, Daniel Tiger is key. And then we also have our assignment, which will be due on Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time, right? Yay! We still have homework. Don't worry, I still have homework for my program also. We do not get any breaks, at least with you guys. You get two breaks. I so, get any. Yes, go ahead, Jeff Jonathan. Just to reiterate, deadlines are all still the same next week. There's no change. Even though it's Thanksgiving, you want to get it in on time because that late deadline is Thanksgiving night and that's no fun. So make sure to get it in on time. Think of it this way. It's a good transition to being in the hospitality industry. I always had to work on Thanksgiving uh, because I would have people staying at the B&B. I'm guessing Chef Gregory has, his mother has to do the same thing. Am I right? Yep. yep. <laughs> And all eight of the hotels I worked at, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every Valentine's Day, Arbor Day, Labor Day, any other day you can think of. Yep. <laughs> yep. It wasn't until actually I started teaching when I actually got holidays off and our family didn't even know what to do. They didn't invite us to anything because they didn't actually think we would have it off. So, you know, just remember... We're preparing you. We're preparing you for the awesome life of hospitality. So, what do you guys think? What is ethics? And this is where you talk. You can talk now. What do you think ethics is? Ethics to me um, is I don't know, it's like a, a set of rules, I guess, you would, could go by. That's the best way I can describe it. Set of rules to go by, yep. Well, what yeah. What else? Anybody else? How do you manage your interpersonal relationships? You said manage your interpersonal relationships? So manage your interpersonal relationships, yes. Okay, and anybody else? What do you guys think ethics is? Like, I tell my kids, which they all have, like, a good work ethic. So they give 110% when they're going to work. And so, um, and, you know, they don't call in. They don't miss work. And so I've instilled in them having a good work ethic. All right. So, very good. Yeah, you want people to have a good work ethic. Because ethics is that guideline that tells you that standard of what is right and what is wrong, right? Are you allowed to murder people? No. No, exactly, that's wrong, right? Versus that's how you have to look at it. It's a group standard, a set of standards that goes over what is right and what is wrong. And now food has been at an 
the ethical debate for ever, pretty much. Because you may look and you're like, wow, I have a zucchini. How cool is this zucchini? And somebody may say, this is a really great zucchini and look at it and it's just a zucchini. But somebody else could look at that zucchini and say that that zucchini was made with GMOs and it was picked by ill-paid, illegal immigrant workers. So there's a whole slew of ethics that go around food. What do you guys think for if you serve a person that you made the marinara sauce with pork bones, do you think that you should serve it to vegetarians? No. That's no. unethical, honestly, because if they're vegetarian, why would they want to eat some type of pork product? Exactly. That's part of ethics. It's even the little things that you do. I mean, everybody knows, you know, you can't actually money launder, right? You can't try to take all the money from the business and do any of that type of stuff, but it's the little things that people don't think about. Like, I'm going to have marinara sauce, but I make it with pork bones, but I'm not going to tell the vegetarians. That is wrong. Correct? Anybody remember that actually being an episode on Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay? It's the same guy who, it was the same episode where the guy got food poisoning from the lobster. Uh, anybody anyway nobody saw that one that was a few years ago but you have to think about those kind of things when you're thinking about ethics because it's not just you know it's all the things combined because with your business you guys have created your mission plan or your uh your mission statement you have your concept right you guys have a pretty uh, good idea of the type of menu the type of service you want to give, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. We went over all that yes. stuff. It's awesome, right? Yes. <laughs> all right. Because you need to know your core values. All of this stuff tie, ties together because understanding what you consider ethical will help you create the core values that you want your business to have. Do you wanna serve local organic food? That means yes, no. If you do, that means you're going to try to find a vendor who's going to supply you local organic food, right? Those are things you have to think about. Are you going to try to make it like a sustainable, eco-friendly venture? Are you going to try to do 100%? And I'm going to look at you, Chef Greg, 100% farm to table. Is that even possible, Chef Greg? It is possible. Um, you just have to think about a lot of things that you use every day, like uh, salt, pepper, fry oil, cornstarch. All of this would have to be produced by you or somebody in a farm, some type of purveyor, um, like making fryer oil for you and then at a farm or a business and bringing it directly to you and then you're using it. Exactly. Because if you're going to say that, and that's part of your values, you need to make certain that you're delivering, right? Because when you have your core values, this is going to help you establish your culture of the company. Are you going to have it be all about the service? Are you going to have your establishment be like, I want pristine service. I want pristine food. So that means I need to make certain that we have a culture that is bases their values on that service. So how many people have heard of a culture before? A cult organizational culture. Jeff John. Oh, I was just raising my hand. I have definitely heard of a <laughs> culture. And I think you're about to get into some really great ones that I love. 
Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so how many people, anybody else have heard of the culture? Organizational culture? And this is important because even if you, from starting your business, or even if you're going in and you're going to be a manager, or you're going to be an executive chef, and you're going to be a GM, you need to understand what the culture is of the organization you're either creating or you're going to join. Because the culture is that is based on the shared beliefs, values, customs, attitudes of everybody in that organization. And they developed the rules to make sure that everything is being followed. That way, if you say you're going to be 100% farm to table, that means you can't use vanilla from Madagascar in any of your stuff, right? So it's very important to think about what you want your values to be for your business and to understand what the values are for the business that you work for. Um, and then there's also the delightful corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility is what the business decides they feel that they need to work on and to improve society and to improve their community. Now, how many people have heard of corporate social responsibility? Yeah. Yeah. For those who didn't, that's why you're in class, right? Isn't that exciting? You get to learn something new. Now, there are different corporate social responsibility and there are different websites that will make sure that you are following those rules that you decided on with your core values and make sure that you're following through. So diff, there are a few different ways you can do that. You can be certified B Corporation. Now, certified B Corporation, have you guys heard of Ben and Jerry's? Am I right? Yeah. Kickstarter, uh, New Belgium Brewery, Stonyfield Organic, all of these organizations. There's over 2,000, as you see, there's over 2,600 companies in 150 different industries have that same goal and they are making certain that people are staying with their values and that they made certain that their corporate social responsibilities are in line and that they continue to stay in line. Because you can't just say, I'm going to be 100% farm to table and then buy nothing from a farm. That's not, you can't do that. That's not allowed. And then we have other ones such as this, which is a, um, the GRI. They make sure that they find out all the information. Is, are all the companies working together they're the ones that are going to research and report what they find about the different people's core values and social responsibilities for each of the companies. So this one is great, a great, great tool to use to help show which companies are doing what, which is a great thing that you guys should look at also, right? And then this is another link for you guys to use. And it's just a magazine that talks about different areas for corporate social responsibility. They have a great one for food and beverage. They have leadership, climate control, supply chain, waste. Are you going to have people recycle? Are you going to have your take, uh, takeaway boxes be recycled? Or are they just going to be a bunch of plastic? Those are things you need to think about. Now, how many people have heard of this stuff before? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, what? It's like uh, all the corporate core values, your corporate social responsibilities. How many people know that? Just a little of it. Just a little bit? A lot, a lot of organizations have it. 
Even some that you may think they don't have it, they actually do. Perfect example, McDonald's has their own corporate social responsibility. So if a place like McDonald's has one, then you should consider having one also, right, for your business. And then another great one is New Belgium. Now they have a whole slew of core values and beliefs and they have 10. You don't have to have 10. You can have, you know, two or three, but they are very, very, very into making certain that they give back to their environment. They want to make sure that their community is going to be improved with what they're doing and the world will be improved with what they're doing. They have solar panels. We they use. Uh, we have a thing out here in Colorado that's called Beetle Kill. Is the beetles come and they kill the pine trees? Their entire warehouse is made from this lumber from the Beetle Kill. They do a lot of great things. Chef Jonathan knows them also well because he was in the same. He used to live in the same town as me, right, Jonathan? Yep, Chef Jonathan. Um, yeah, New Belgium does a fantastic job of not only putting those core beliefs out there, but creating that corporate culture and extending that to the communities that they're in. They've really done a great job of this. There is a bike parade that basically takes over the entire town, and it was New Belgium who did it. It's all about New Belgium. It's really about you can ride your bike around town and all of their sustainability practices, but new, a company is the one who started it. So your core values and the culture that comes out of those can really have a wide impact. It can. I mean, I don't know any other company where all of the employees said, no, thank you. I don't want my bonus this year. I want that money to go to installing new wind, like soul wind panels or the wind turbines, turbines. Was it wind or did they do solar? I don't remember. I thought it was wind. It could have been wind is a turbine, solar is a panel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the turbine. Um, but I think it was, I can't remember if they used their bonus money to do new solar or new wind. Um, I'll have to look it up and then I'm going to send it to you guys. But that's the type of culture they created. Everybody is super keen on making sure that they are giving back. That is what they do. They even have a thing called, like, they created their own, uh, oh, their own, uh, organization within the culture that's called the beer scouts and the beer scouts go and they make sure they're all, the trails are all clean they help with homeless like they do all sorts of stuff and that's something that you need to consider when you're looking at your business now being ethical doesn't always mean that it's doing being ethical and following the law isn't the same thing because you can, the health department doesn't care if you're serving organic food. They just want to make sure that you are following the codes and laws and regulations to not get anybody sick. So remember that when you're looking at stuff, ethics will be different than your laws. And your laws are just, are I was going to say just as important, but actually more important because you need to know the laws and regulations of your area so that you can actually feed people what you want to feed them, right? And not get anybody sick or make certain that you are in the right area. This is why research is key. Do you like my little thing? Why is it called research when you're searching for it for the first time? I love that. I found that. I loved, absolutely loved it. Anybody? Anybody? I just sent it to my sister. She thought it was great. So you have to know the different laws and regulations. That means health department. Health department is going to want to know if you know the temperature that you cook chicken at. What is the temperature that you're supposed to cook chicken at? 
165 for how many seconds? 15. 15 seconds. Look at you, Jesse. Yep, 15 seconds. Where are you going to put the, you have a refrigerator and you have a salad and you have ground beef. What's going to go on top? The salad? The salad. The salad. Yes. You need to know. It always that goes on the bottom. Exactly. Um, if you see that you have a rat infestation, who are you going to call to fix it? Exterminator. Exterminator. Yes, you can't do that on your own. That is not allowed, right? But it's always different everywhere. There are different rules and regulations for everywhere you live. So that's why there is, you know, there's federal laws, but then there's state laws, and then there's local and county laws. And you need to be able to find that information because even if you're a manager or if you are starting this business, saying, I didn't know my bad, you isn't an option. You will still get fined. You will still get in trouble. So you have to be able to do the research and find the laws and regulations. Now, SurfSafe is a great tool that you guys can use. How many people have heard of SurfSafe? Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? SurfSafe, it's great. You can take the test and it goes over all the different uh, safety procedures and follows your flow of foods. That is important to know. Now, SurfSafe, while it's trying to become more national, and more places are recognizing it, there are still different places that do different things. Uh, for example, when I first moved out to Colorado, nobody ever heard of Surf Safe before. I had to go two hours away to take my examination to like actually be recertified. This was before online and all that great stuff where you actually had to go in and you had your pen your your little quiz book and they you know made you do it that way uh, but it's different in every area uh, chef gregory and i were talking because i am while i'm originally from massachusetts i have not cooked in massachusetts in over 14 years and laws and regulations have changed right chef greg yes yes they definitely have um, one side note on SurfSafe, uh, every corporation that I've worked for on your initial, um, online interview, they do like a screening and every single one that I worked for asked you if you're SurfSafe certified. However, with that, um, per state, it might just be one person per the building, one person per the business. Some states, however, have to have every single person that's handling food, front of the house and back of the house, has to be serve safe certified. Yeah, and I mean, and it changes. And that's why it's so important to not only do your research, but keep up to date on the research and the laws and regulations. Because these things change all the time. Um, just recently, serve safe has now has to be at least one person, manager, has to be Serve Safe manager certified, not just regular Serve Safe certified. They have to be manager certified. And that takes in, that goes into effect in January 2019 for my area. But that's not in every single area. It's going to be different where you live. That is why it's so important to know your area. Is it different for you, Chef Jonathan, where you are? So I've had a lot of experience dealing with this. <laughs> so fun. Um, I, I actually love food safety stuff. But um, in Nebraska, I believe we need both the manager certification for like the executive chef, any manager on duty. Somebody in the building at all times has to have that manager certification. 
we also have to have everybody who's in the kitchen, like even our dishwasher, needs to have the food handler card as well. So um, when I was staging with a food truck, whenever we crossed over city lines, everything changed uh, in some instances. So it can be down to your individual city. It can be your county. Most health code is county to county. And sometimes they take their lead from the state, but it radically changes everywhere you go sometimes. So definitely look into wherever you're going to actually be setting up business. Right. And that also goes for uh, alcohol. Some places you need to be tips certified or every single person who is serving alcohol needs to be tips certified. How many people have heard of tips certification before? It's the training for intervention procedures. Anybody? Anybody? I've done one of those trainings before, but that was in Alaska, so it was a different thing. Well, it'll be different in each state, right? Uh, because every single state has a different rules and regulations. And every business, what if this isn't your business? What if you're walking in and you need to actually become the executive chef and general manager? You need to know what the policy is for that business, especially for corporate corporate, they do, their procedures are above and beyond. Isn't that correct, Chef Greg? Yes, yes, they are. So if we're talking about um, corporates, so every year I would have two state health inspections. Every year I'd have two county health inspections, one town health inspection. I would have a third party, either Ecolab or Stereotech. They're like huge companies. They help you with like your chemicals and pest control and stuff like that. I would have one surprise visit from them. And I would also have one plan visit from them. And then internally talking about the Bank of America um, businesses, they have a company called CBRE and they do all the facilities. So they cover like security, um, carpets, they cover everything that's with the building. And twice a day, once for breakfast and once for lunch, I would get their audit also. As far as audits go, it was literally, it was every day, it was every shift, it was all year long. Dang. And, and it's not to scare you guys, but you need to understand all of these factors for your business. And while, and you need to know what your zoning laws are going to be and what the fire code is going to be in for your area and your liquor laws, because you may say, well, I'm not going to serve alcohol, but are you going to actually have alcohol in the food? Are you going to deglaze your pan with that white wine? As cheap as that white wine may be, you still need a liquor license for it. So you need to know the laws. We actually, and they are great areas that you can look. I went to the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment and they have a whole slew on starting a business. I also looked up, I'm in Fort Collins. I went to the Fort Collins government website and they talk about zoning because zoning is key you may think oh i have the perfect location and it's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be in this big victorian beautiful house but that victorian beautiful house is zoned for residential so you actually can't have your business there these are things you have to think about and especially with fire code you want people to be safe knowing the fire code is especially important for those who like catering, any caterers out there? Anybody, anybody who ever wanted to do catering? Yes, you are, for caterers, you got a lot to do. You have to plan, help plan the events. You gotta help set that thing up. You also need to know whether or not you actually need to have the fire department come by and inspect your tent to make sure that you have the correct tent. Those are things you have to think about even if you're like, well, I'm just going to be catering. You're like, well, if you're going to have a tent, you still need to know the fire code. You need to know if you actually need fire extinguishers in your area. You're going to be cooking that food somewhere. Do you have the proper ventilation? Do you have the proper hood set up? Those are things you have to research and look at to make sure that you understand your 
area in your location. And I feel like it's a really good segment into this week's assignment. Question right quick, Chef. Yes. Okay, as far as you just uh, making a um, statement about catering, I know some catering events sometimes they'll have a main plant or a main kitchen and then they'll, they'll, they'll just transfer the food to the event and put it in the chafing dishes and everything. So you still would have to research for that to make sure that you would have to have all the safety guidelines filled out even though you're not cooking it on the spot. Exactly, because you need yep. to make sure that you're actually holding it to temperature correctly. Do you have a sneeze guard? Are you required to have a sneeze guard? How long is that cold food supposed to stay out for? How long is that hot food supposed to stay out for? Is the area going to actually work for you? These are things you need to make certain that. And especially, um, it brings up an excellent point on insurance because caterers, you have to make sure that you are insured properly because a lot of for catering, if you're going to go to a place, they might not hold your insurance because they're not responsible for the food. You are. So you have to make certain that you actually are holding the insurance and that you have done everything you can so that that insurance agent, if something does go wrong, they're not going to come back and say, well, you know, we're not going to actually cover you because you didn't do this, this, and this. You decided that you were going to like do a cold smoke and cold smoke to preserve, but you never actually came up with a HACCP plan. So therefore, we're not going to actually pay for anybody getting sick. Those can't, are things you have to think about. Can't you also have that drew up in the contract with certain rules and regulations that you wanted to be covered? So like, they'll have to come up with so much and you will have to meet so much with the criteria of putting it all together. Like you could say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to bring 10 workers in to serve the food, to clean up, to break down and whatnot. But you have to make sure that we have sufficient room to what's provided for us to be able to work. Can't you have it like draw it up in a contract? I'm going to give you a great example that I know Chef Jonathan will know for sure, but Chef Gregory, if you've never been in the mountains, you won't know it, but <laughs> so sorry. Um, that, you know, a lot of people wanna have these beautiful mountain weddings and they want the backdrop and it's all gorgeous and they have it at sunset and it is the middle of nowhere. Right. It takes two hours to get to, and there is, there's a field. That's all you got. You got a field and whatever you bring with you. There is no contract that you can create with mother nature that will cover whatever happens. So think of it like that. You always have to, and make sure, you always wanna make sure that you are covering you. This is your business. This is your liability. You wanna make sure that you are covered because it's your name, it's your reputation, it's your brand. And it's your money. So think about those things. And Chef, may I add something in? Yes, please do. Uh, Tracy, when you're talking about offsite catering, when we were talking about like serve safe and sanitation, you have to bring and provide all that stuff with you. You still have to have like, you know, your red buckets with a disposable towel in it. It has to have the proper sticker on it. You have to bring your MSDS sheets. So you have to bring all those sanitation things with you. And even some states, if you're going to bring uh, like alcohol, it doesn't matter, beer and wine, anything, some of them, you actually have to have like a cage or a locked box truck to keep that booze in. You can't just like leave the thing open and grab beers as you need them. Some states are actually so strict, you have to prove that it's locked. Wow. Yep. But that's yep. where it's so important to do the mm -hmm. research and know your laws and regulations which is why it's so important for Chef Jonathan to go over the assignment with you this week that talks about the laws and regulations. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I love it. All right, so guys, this week, uh, make sure you grab this worksheet, State and Local Requirements. It's right there, that'll bring you to this sheet here. 
couple of things I wanted to point out. Number one, right at the top here, make sure you type in your concept summary. I hate taking points away for this. So just write your concept summary and hang on to it because you're going to need it almost every week of this course. Um, so moving past that, you've got this nice example already here on your sheet if you want to look back. But basically, you're just going to go through each of these permits, licenses, your fire inspection, you're going to cite, you're going to do some research and find some information about them. Cite your source here. So you're going to copy and paste your, the link of where you got your information from. And that goes in this column. And then over here, you're going to, in your own words, let me know how you go about getting that how it applies to you specifically in your area with your concept. So it sounds pretty straightforward, but like with all the assignments in this course, it's all about the details. So for instance, we were just talking about servesafe.com. This is a wonderful tool. That is, we were talking all about these food handler permits, right? But I need to figure out if I need it in my city, in my county, in my state. So I did a Google search and it brought me to the Douglas County Health Department. By the way, this is a terrific place to look for things like this. Uh, I live in Douglas County, so that's why Douglas County. And there's actually three different food codes that apply to me here. So then I have to click into, say, the Nebraska food code. And this is a 177 page document, control F, uh, food handler is a wonderful tool because it will bring you to anything that relates to food handlers or your table of contents is a great place. Food code is long and you can find answers here. You can also find answers in easier places if you dig around. So there's a short way that's gonna take a lot of reading or there's more research to be done that might give you a shortcut. So the more research you do, the better off you'll be. But once you do find the answer, you're gonna take that link, copy it and come back to this site and paste it in here. So I've got not only ServeSafe, but also that Nebraska food code plus my local food code because I pulled information from all three of these places. So then I filled in the information in my own words, how I have to go about being in compliance with this. So in Omaha, I need both the manager certification and that food handler card. And I need, in order to do that, I take a course online and I pass the test, no big deal. I wanna also include in this how much money that's gonna cost me because that's part of your startup costs that you're gonna be asking investors for. So if there's a fee or a fine or an application fee involved in any of these, that's a really big piece of information that you wanna include with this stuff. Finally, you're gonna just drop a link to whatever application is applicable here. So for instance, with a liquor license, I've got a link that takes me straight to that liquor license application. Does that make sense, guys? I'm gonna keep going through it. I just wanna make sure there's no questions yet. So basically you're just looking up what's in your state for the um, like, Whatever you basically need, you just look up. So I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I will look under Wisconsin's liquor law state, I mean liquor law, and then they would give me the link to let me know basically where I would go to look to find out what is applicable to me. There are definitely, some places are easier than others. Most states, <laughs> most counties, most cities will have a quick, do I need a liquor license? How do I get a liquor license? Um, Frequently Asked Questions, or FAQ, is a great place to look for those types okay. of answers. That's what I was wondering, was it a certain way I should ask for it? Because I know you can ask Google the same question two or three different ways, and it'll give you two or three different answers. 
So that's what I was wondering. But that's why it's important to grab the information from an actual legit website and not just writing what the first Google search, like that little tiny line sentence says. You have to look and actually open it up and see all of the information. A perfect example is the place I worked. We lost our liquor license. We didn't do anything wrong, but the owner wanted to open up a distillery. And the owner, you can only, in my area, you can only have one liquor license in your name. So we lost our liquor license so that he could open up a distillery. So that's why it's important to know. And I would have never known that if I just looked at that first sentence off of Google. So that's why it's important to look at that stuff. Yeah, because I know sometimes it'll say official site. That's what I was wondering, because sometimes when you first click on there, it'll have like 10 or 15 like definitions or topics, and it'll say official site at the very top, and then that's the one that you'll click on and think that's the only one you should look at. So that's what I was wondering. Yeah, sorry, I was going to let you finish up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> finish up, Greg. <laughs> Just one quick comment on when you guys get into the liquor thing. I know all of us live in different states, counties, towns, and stuff. Some states, like, they only give out a certain amount, and people are on a wait list to have, like, a beer and wine license or a full bar license. If you guys run into that, it's okay. Just provide that information, like, about the wait list. It'll say, like, how many people are on it, how many people per license, how many licenses per county. So if you, for any reason, live in uh, downtown Boston, you're going to run into it that it's completely okay just still provide us that information to show us about the wait list yeah and even if you're like i'm not gonna have any alcohol whatsoever we're gonna go full dry like no problem that's great but you still need to know where that information is so we still need to know where you found that information even if you say i don't know you know like i i'm not gonna do any alcohol but maybe down the line, you will want to do alcohol. And wouldn't it be great to do the research now to find it instead of later on? Jeff, Jonathan, before you finish up, uh, Jennifer has a question, sir. That's what I was just going to ask. <laughs> I think you guys just actually answered it for me. I was going to ask, because I'm opening up a family-oriented place. There's not going to be any alcohol. And we are actually one of the places that have the limited amount of liquor license and the okay. new court just took it. So <laughs> I already know about all the limited amounts. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess I'll just research it and put it down. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead. Yep. And then Tammy, Tammy. It looks like you have a question. Yeah. And then I'm, as usual, I'm going to be doing mine for another country, Australia. So and Australia has all sorts of different laws and regulations that you have to make certain that you do. So, and you can't just say what country, I mean, are you going to be in Melbourne? Are you going to be in Perth? Are you going to be on Breon Bay? Are you going to be on the Gold Coast, Sydney? All of those places have their own sets of laws and regulations. So you need to know what it is for the country you're going into. That's Sydney because that's what's on my concept. Yeah. So you're going to need to know for Sydney and that's a big old city. And they got a lot of, they got a lot of stuff there. So you got to make sure that you know what you need to do. And especially since you're over here, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, if you're going to start something international, you really got to do your research and know it before you fly on that 20, was it 24 hour flight over there? <laughs> so Nadia. question that um uh, that um uh, that i will uh, when will the archive be available so i will try to do a little bit myself uh, at night then i will show it to you tomorrow yeah i try to load it as soon as it's done loading this hour long archive actually takes quite a bit of time so that's where you know it just takes a lot of Time so, I will, uh, so I will try to watch it again and I will try to do some little bit myself then I will do it and then I will show it to you in the morning tomorrow. All right. And then where'd my screen go? Uh, and I, I don't think so. I have some um, uh, about this uh, in my champagne state. I'm in champagne. 
Nice. Yep. You are. You are in Champaign, Illinois. Nice. So, so I think I, I don't have the, like like this thing and about tax and this. I don't have in in my state. Well, that's where you gotta make sure you look it up, and you gotta if you say you don't have it, you gotta show us the references of where you found it said that you don't have it and why you don't need it. That's an important thing is why too, right? Because the, because my Champaign state is a very small state. It is. Mm -hmm. The Chicago well, state is bigger and this is not big. But they'll still have their own set of laws and regulations in that area that you need to make certain that you're following. Because I'm in a city right now, but there are plenty of other towns around. So do we go off of each individual town or is it an entire county? Those are things you need to find yeah, this out. Is a, this is a Champaign County. County of Illinois. Yeah. So, and then remember for this week, your assignment will be due on Tuesday. Your discussion will be due on Saturday with two peer responses due on Tuesday. And Thanksgiving live session will be on Wednesday. But remember, try to get it done early so you can enjoy yourself and have fun and not worry about trying to get your grade, like get your assignment in to be graded and all that good stuff. So try to get it done sooner rather than later. Get it done now. Focus on your turkey or whatever everybody's gonna make. Okay, is gonna make anything exciting? Anything fun? Nothing? My green bean casserole. Green bean casserole, nice, nice. All right, well guys, it was a great, great week two. We we're doing great, great live session. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody when? Wednesday. Yeah, Tracy, Wednesday. Wednesday at 7.30 Central Standard Time. I'll see everybody then. And like I said, if you're traveling, that's okay. That's what the archives are for. So just turn that on and relax and enjoy. Jesse, do you want to go ahead with your question real quick? Yeah, I have uh, three things. Um, first, okay. for the surf safe, uh, on my county's website, it says that one person has to have it. Uh, it doesn't say whether or not that's on staff at all times or just one person has to have it, whether or not they're there or not. If you run into that, or if anybody runs into that, Almost all instances on that, it would be the person like who's on duty, whether it be like the general manager, the food and beverage director, the executive chef. When you run into that, it's it's 99% of the time, like somebody has to be there at all times with it. Okay. Uh, second thing is, uh, for the externship, is there more information on the website? I can't find anything pertaining to that. I will provide okay. extra information for you guys in our discussion. I will put it in my discussion to all you guys. I have I have my homework. I got to do the yeast and I got to do my discussion, right? For uh, and put in the G chef Gina's information for you guys so you can get that going. Chef okay. Gina is awesome. Oh, good. That's good to know. Any uh, other one questions? last thing? Yeah. Oh, um, if you do site colon and then whatever website you want to search, you can actually search specific websites for specific terms. So I did uh, I did my county so site colon dot or site colon maricopa dot gov, and I put in surf safe and it listed every single web page uh, for them pertaining to surf safe. So that's how I found my information. All right. I have a question. Oh, I have yeah. a question. Uh, with the um, assignment where he put the example in, do we delete that or do we just leave that or did he do one for us and she give us an example or do we still do the tax ID? So <clears throat> this example right up top here, this is going to be there for you already. You do not have to redo it. It's already done for you. So you just need to do the employee, the food handler employee. permit. Okay. License, zoning, fire inspection, and okay. seller's permit. Okay. I had looked at it already, so I was trying to be on top of it by the time I came to class today. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, Tammy, Tammy, what was your question? Yeah, I was going to just say, yeah, for us, 
<laughs> going to Australia, I will have to uh, get a residential visa as it is. Well, you'll need that, but then you also are starting up a business. So you need to know all the information to start up a business over there in your restaurant. So what is their version of serve safe? What is their version of their zoning in liquor laws? And what is their fire code? You have to know all of that stuff. It's the easy part. It's getting the visa. That's the hard part. And uh, I'm over age. Well, that'll be good. And now uh, <laughs> you, so that way you know where to go. And you know, remember, if you do .au, that's Australia. If you, it's like yahoo.au, that'll bring you to your Australian website. And it's different for every country because we're .com, but then oh, what's UK? Is it .co? Is that UK? I'm not remembering. But I'm not sure. Yeah, but I know .au is the one for Australia. So, all right, guys. Well, if there's no other questions, I am looking forward to seeing everybody next Wednesday at 7.30 Central Standard Time. I can't and, work. And I'll see everybody then. I hope you have a great, great week. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's discussions because it's going to be fun. Yay, epics. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I am. I done already. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, have a great rest of your night, guys. Uh, good you night. Can. Bye, everybody. I think I'll have to do the archive.